everyone to a different type of episode of PTTV. Today we're live from CSM 2013 in San Diego. <laughs> um, so normally we do this remotely, but today we have a live audience, as you might have heard in the background. Um, some of you are watching online. If you have questions, go ahead and tweet them in PTTV CSM. And today we're joined by Sydney James, who is an expert with TRX, who's going to take it over, and she's going to demo some stuff. You've all been sitting in classes all day and just had people talking at you, and today we're going to have someone that's actually going to show you some stuff. So she's going to take it away. Great. So we talked about kind of the format, the usual PTTV, and how they're user-generated questions, and I thought partially because TRX may be a little bit relatively unknown in the rehab world, and also because we have a live audience who you know wants to move and get going a little bit, we're actually going to do some demo and then take some questions. Hopefully the stuff I talk about will generate some questions later on today. So just by way of background, my name is Sydney James, as Alex introduced. I'm a physical therapist in San Francisco, California, home of TRX headquarters. Um, I've been practicing in outpatient or orthopedics for the past 10 years. I am a board certified in orthopedics and a Pilates instructor as well. So. The fact that I also have an um, interest in and in work with TRX is, came as somewhat of, of a surprise because I thought I had all the bases covered. Um, I've been using TRX personally for probably about five or six years and professionally around that same time. Um, just a quick background, TRX was, was born in the military. It was created by a Navy SEAL by the name of Randy Hetrick who was looking for a way to keep his troops fit when they were in you know, safe houses and, and not able to do their, their typical exercise. Um, over the years, after it was developed a little, bit more, uh, a little bit more further at Stanford University, they decided, you know what, this is great for the general fitness population, but how can we, we think that there's a real use for this in the rehab world. And so the sports medicine curriculum was developed several years ago, and we started teaching continuing education classes for healthcare practitioners. So that's where I really joined in with the team and trying to get the message out that this is a great tool for a lot of different reasons. And that's what I want to talk about tonight is why is this such a great tool for rehab. The first, as you can see, we are in a conference room at the Omni Hotel in San Diego. And when Alex told me where we were going to be, I thought, okay, this might pose a little bit of a problem, but I've never been in a situation where I haven't been able to anchor a TRX. So as you can see, we're right in front of the door here and we're using a door anchor. So this comes into play for people in rehab situations because a lot of times you're in a facility that has false walls or doors or just not a lot of equipment. It's a real, it's a tool that you can use when you have a limited amount of space. Um, I have clinicians who hook it to pre-existing equipment. They'll loop it over a door. Sometimes they'll do special anchoring um, mounts that, that we have available, but it really isn't. I've never been presented with a situation where I couldn't figure out a solution for anchoring. So, I challenge any of you to help me come up with one. Um, we even use it outside, hanging it around trees or stop signs or, or anything like that. The second is um, you really don't need a lot of space. We're in this tiny, you know, this, this room, and we're going to be able to do a lot of exercises, which you'll see in a little bit, with a small amount of space. So I like that, especially if you're in a, a small clinic um, without a lot of equipment. It's portable, and so when you think physical therapy, you may think, okay, what type of therapist needs to be portable? Home health is the first thing that comes to mind. And you may be scratching your heads thinking, how would I use this in a home health situation? That, that type of patient may not be right for TRX, but I'm hoping that by the end of today, you'll see that that is an appropriate patient for TRX. But if you imagine team sports, you know, you're working with a, a football team or a youth soccer team, you can take it out on the field and use it. I have several friends now who are doing in-home visits, just private orthopedic um, treatment, and this is their main tool, because they can go to someone's house take this with them and do all sorts of range of motion, strength and stability exercises. So the first two, the portability and the um, ability to kind of anchor wherever you want. space It's a space saver for sure. Um, secondly, I think the meat of what we teach in the sports medicine class, which is an eight hour class um, designed for healthcare practitioners, including physical therapists, chiropractors, athletic trainers, the meat of it is really in the regressions of exercises. And it's interesting, just here today at the conference, people were coming up to talk to us, but they were more interested in home use. How can I use this at home? And I even had one guy, one student ask my colleague Brian, um, what's the hardest exercise you can do on the TRX? And I think for us, while we're thinking of ways that we can progress and stay fit, what we really need to start thinking about is how we can regress for our patients. And a lot of people look at this and think hard exercise. Well, I've come to kind of look at it as making exercise accessible to everybody. 
So um, one way we can do that is we can regress an exercise and use this tool from early intervention, post-op week one, rotator cuff repair, all the way through sports performance. So I'm actually gonna bring Brian up to help me demo a little bit. And I wanted to show you a few ways that we can regress an exercise. Just to, by way of quick usage, um, the TRX is adjustable. These, these uh, cam buckles here can be pulled down to lengthen the device. Or similarly, you can pull down and pull up to shorten the device. And there's certain, um, certain ways we talk about the length of the straps. You know, most rows and forward-facing exercises are done either in the mid or short range. Facing away are generally done in the long range. But we don't subscribe to any protocols of exercise. PTs and healthcare professionals are the experts. So we just want to give you the tools and the theories, and then you can do your treatments from there. So we're going to pretend here that, that Brian is um, post-op biceps tendon repair, and he's been cleared for passive range of motion only. So what tools would you usually use? You might use some manual therapy. You may use pulleys. I would argue that you could use the T-Rex very easily. So you're actually going to be a right shoulder surgery. I want your left hand on the bottom of the, um, of the handle. Your right hand's going to ride right on top. So switch your hand crossing for me. And I want you to keep this arm as relaxed as possible. From here, Brian can just go into a walking motion. So you're going to walk forward and allow the arms to come overhead. Take a step back and ride back. And obviously, you'd want to make sure that he's not bearing a lot of weight in the strap. Do a couple more for me. So the walking regression is key. The thing I like about this for an arthritic shoulder or somebody who wants to control their movement, pain is so much about control. And so if somebody can control movement, a lot of times you can get a lot more motion and a lot better results because they're, they're in control of the exercise. So I'll let people kind of do that. When we get to active assisted range of motion, go ahead and hold on to this strap, and we're gonna go to a walking chest press. So you're gonna walk forward, allow the arms to come back, and then walk back. And so I can start saying to Brian, all right, I want 10% in your arms, 90% in your legs. You know, your arms are just kind of passively, passively moving. As he gets farther down the road, I can say, all right, Brian, I want you to give me 30% arms, 70% legs, continue with the walking regression. And you can start to see that any motion can be done walking. So take this to a row, take this to an overhead T, take this, or excuse me, T, take this to an I. You know, any motion that you come up with can be turned into this walking. Let's go into an offset foot stance, offset stance position. One foot forward, one foot back. And now he's, he's able to start strengthening. We're working on, say, scapular stability. Go ahead and take a couple chest presses for me. And again, I can start using percentages to let him know how much work I'd like him to do in his legs versus his arms. As we continue progressing the exercise, because I started you with the regression of walking, then to the regression of offset foot stance, we can go into a wide base of support with a fairly um, shallow angle, and he can start learning, learning a chest press. And then knowing some key principles of physics, so thinking about this is our vector, or excuse me, this is our, um, not only our stability principle, but also our vector resistance principle, he can start to make the exercise a little bit harder, either by narrowing his base of support and or walking his feet back to make a steeper angle. So some of the basic exercises can be made, can be taken from the beginning of rehab all the way to the end. The other thing I like to use TRX for is to actually teach a movement. And two of the most commonly taught movements that I use on the TRX are the squat. And I'm sure everybody thinks they know how to do a squat, but how many of us, when we ask a patient to do a squat, see a vertical shin angle or see a forward trunk lean? So what I would do, adjust the straps to mid length. You're gonna stand facing the anchor point, holding onto the handles, elbows directly under your shoulders, okay? And I'm just going to have you go into a squat position. And so I use this very much as an assessment tool. What, what is he doing? Even though he's unloading his body, I can see, OK, is he going into a valgus knee collapse? Is he really far forward with his, with his knees? Go ahead and stand up. And we can assess the movement and also train the movement. So if you're trying to unload a tissue, it's a nice way to unload through the arms. Um, there was a study in 2009 that showed that multi-joint exercises, they Although they had lower muscular activation than a single joint exercise, the activity level was still perceived as strenuous. So for somebody that maybe can't go out for a run and can't get their normal exercise, I can get them on here and start loading those tissues in a gradual manner, but still give them the feeling that they're, they're working hard. 
So I use that one specifically um, to assess movement. The other one I'll look at and to teach movement is a row. So let's have you, I'm gonna shorten these up a little bit more. Same starting position, facing that anchor point, okay? Scaps retract, so I'm gonna have you, can you do kind of a biceps dominant row? Yeah, or even just like not scap retracting. So a lot of times your row, whether it's TheraBand row, free motion row, wherever you're having the person do the row, it can become a very easily a biceps dominant activity. So I'm actually gonna have you, let's loop your hands through the foot cradles, come into the I Dream of Genie pose, so up above your, let's go all the way up onto your forearms. So you're here, and then you're gonna cross the arms over. Mm -hmm. Have you done this one before? Cool, see this is me to Brian, and he works for TRX. This is our sports medicine curriculum. You're gonna walk your feet forward just a little bit. From here, I want you to squeeze your shoulder blades together and then round forward. I'm probably gonna have you take a step forward. I'm sorry, yeah, towards me. And lean back on the straps just a little bit, good. So you're gonna squeeze the shoulder blades to bring your body forward. Yep, and then like up. So just a nice way to teach scap retraction. This is an exercise I teach no matter if I'm gonna have the person ultimately use the TRX or if they're gonna go onto a TheraBand row, if they're gonna go onto a row at the gym because you're taking biceps out of the equation. And then once they've mastered that scapular position, then we can say, okay, Brian, now hang on to the handles. Let's try that same motion. So you're gonna extend your elbows. I want you to squeeze your shoulder blades together before you bend your elbows to pull yourself up. Good, you're maintaining that nice plank position. So we're working on a lot of different things here. Um, so I think teaching motion, assessing motion, making exercises, making people feel like they're doing some good work even if they're not at the stage where they can really do a lot of exercise. Those are some of the ways that I use this in rehab. So, any questions so far? Awesome. <laughs> good, well I can continue because the other way that I, I like to use this is to make people feel safe. We were actually one of the other clinicians in here and I were just talking about, you know, is there a person that you, would, you wouldn't use this for? Is there an age group that you wouldn't use that, this for? And I say no. I mean, I have, I have adolescents to Medicare patients in their 70s and 80s using this. Um, I had a patient who had a distal tibial, tibial fibular fracture, and she, had, um, she didn't have any hardware, but she was super stiff and not used to moving, <coughs> and just starting to kind of weight bear when she came to me. She was still in the boot when she came to me. Once she was able, I'm going to have you do a... Um, just a side to side lunge. Mm -hmm. When she was able to start moving, I literally, you know, she didn't want me pushing on that ankle and doing Taylor curl APs and moving her ankle like that. So I thought, I just wasn't getting anywhere with that. So I thought, well, what could I do to make her feel like she's in charge here and she's able to move? So we'll go into just that side to side weight shift. So we literally did this probably for two or three minutes, along with some other things. And you, as, if you can, I don't know if you can see Brian from behind, those of you um, not in our studio audience. But, you know, Brian's getting some pretty good lateral motion. He's tolerating it. This may be something that he hasn't done before since his, his fracture. And, and again, this was a 50-plus-year-old you know, woman who was, was nervous about, about this fracture and about moving. Next time she came in, she goes, I don't know what you did to me, but my ankle hasn't felt this good you know, since before the fracture. And I told her, I said, I didn't do it to you. You, you did it. You moved. Um, a lot of times when we're introducing agility, and I don't know that we have the bandwidth camera-wise to demonstrate a lot of agility, but we'll introduce agility patterns side to side, karaoke, using this because people feel safe. They feel like, okay, I'm holding on. I can, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to fall if I, if I don't land that. Yeah, you can do kind of karaoke. So just starting to introduce that movement. It's a great way to unload the tissues while introducing movement. Some of my older folks that may have balance issues, um, I'll have you're gonna stand facing. I want you to push down firmly into the handles to activate your lats. And we're just gonna look at, if any of you are familiar with the SFMA, looking at balance and single leg balance. So we're just gonna look at single leg balance here. And then you're gonna switch sides. So looking at that pelvic and, and whole body shift from side to side. Somebody who has a, a, you know, a balance issue distally and instability proximally, this can be a great exercise for. Very good. And then probably my other, um, my other favorite thing about the TRX is the ability to do a lot of scapular stability work. So ground-based work, can you, mm -hmm. do you mind going ground? Go to the camera, get, get ground. Yep, yep, we're good. So we're gonna lengthen this out to about mid-calf, or if I've learned as a PT that not everybody's calves are the same length, 
So the other marker I like to use is distal patella. So we'll bring the handles down to, <coughs> that might be it. Okay, and Brian's gonna go on the floor, you're gonna be um, feet, nope, feet in, facing away. And we all have our own little ways of getting our feet in. This is if you're flexible and coordinated. You do it like this. So I'm gonna have you come into a plank position. Okay, so first of all, we can assess what does his plank in an unstable position look like? Okay, and we know, again, from research that um, an unstable push-up is the best way to activate the lats, and lats are a core stabilizer. So from here, I'm just gonna have Brian go into a weight shift. So you're gonna shift from side to side. Yep. And so we can, we can look at scapular stability, and he's, he actually has pretty darn good scap stability. We can look at neck position if he's um, hypertonic in his neck extensors. And just what happens as he starts to shift weight? What happens as he fatigues and starts to lose that endurance? We can look at pelvic, lumbopelvic stability. Good, and then go ahead and take a break. So a lot of what I've shown you already has been fairly advanced. I think a lot of our basic rehab exercises can be taken to this to make just a little bit harder. So one that you actually probably haven't done is quadruped, hands and knees. Okay, so go ahead and take your feet out. And you're gonna face the anchor point. This is a little high for what I would do clinically, but we're gonna go <coughs> hands, you're gonna be on basically hands and knees, mm -hmm. hands in here, and you're gonna go into an alternating leg lift, okay. like a bird dog. So I will point out that the one limitation of the door anchor, which again, most clinics, some clinics may use, you lose a little bit of the ability to regress an exercise. Um, in order, one of the ways to regress an exercise is to have the feet on one side of the anchor point and the head on the other. Just makes it a little bit easier, like pulling downhill versus where Brian's gonna be, the force vector is pulling him uphill, so it may be a little bit more challenging. So know that if you're using this solution in your clinic, you may lose some of the ability to make exercises easier for patients. So, no, you're actually gonna face the anchor point. So you're basically gonna be here, hands and knees. Okay, so again, I would have this a little bit longer, you can kind of fold your body in half. Yeah, there you go. Now from here, I want you to extend one leg behind you, maintaining a stable pelvis. So we would clearly already be assessing for his mobility. Can we see here? Yeah, good. And then set that leg down, activate the core, and alternate sides, and then have you put your leg in here. And back down. Good. Great. And then come on back up. So in addition to the stability work, the strengthening work, um, we can also work on flexibility. I think your uh, computer may be dying. <laughs> Showing a battery. <laughs> Robbie, one, keep going. Yeah, one of my colleagues um, was just at an event where a woman had a challenging question and said, yeah, yeah, that's all well and good. I see you working a lot of sagittal plane motion, a lot of frontal plane motion, but what do you do for, for transverse plane motion? So we started brainstorming. I think we came up with about eight or ten exercises. So let's go ahead and do single arm rows to start, and then we'll add single arm rows of rotation. You okay. okay. I'm going to put it in single handle mode just so. As a safety mechanism, this device has a locking loop so that if you were to pull on one handle, it wouldn't go completely through the other side. I'm still in the habit of putting it into the single handle mode just for ease of use with smaller hands. So Brian's gonna stand facing the anchor point, elbow directly under shoulder, scapula squeezed. So I try to use regular words for regular people. All I want you to do is extend your elbow and lower yourself down, maintaining that plank position and resisting rotation. You're gonna squeeze your shoulder blade back and pull yourself in. Take two more like that for me. So again, you're, you can kind of as a therapist come around and make sure is he maintaining that plank position do his mechanics look good? And then if we want to add a little bit of transverse rotational work onto this, okay, you're going to go into a single arm row with rotation, retracting that scapula first, and then driving yourself up. Good. Great. So that's just one example of a way that you can you can use rotation, and I actually try to structure my patients' workouts and my own workouts in a you know plane of motion dependent. So we'll do sagittal, frontal, and transverse in every workout. Any questions?
varying the feet width, would that also change? Absolutely, yeah, in, in terms of standing. Yeah, so um, just a quick, you're getting a secret from our Con Ed class, but there's three principles of progression that we talk about. One is the stability principle. So um, it's show a uh, chest press, and let's show all three, so wide, narrow, and single. So you know you've got you can either alter the vector, so how steep he's standing, or we can simply alter his foot position. He can go from wide to real narrow, which he's having is challenging his base of support. Or even better, we can go single leg work. Mm -hmm. So kind of depending if you've had a if the, the patient's had a harder workout, or you know your your goal is something else. Your goal is more stability than shoulder motion and chest strength. He can go into his offset foot stance to add a little bit more stability. So absolutely. So we've got the stability principle, which we showed here. We've got the vector resistance principle, which why don't we demonstrate that in a row? Mm -hmm. That'd be a good one. I didn't realize how high that was. So with a row, we call this our low row. Where are you going from here? Are you going up or down? <laughs> Make it a little bit easier. He could decrease his angle. So vector resistance. So you can see this can go from early stage to late stage, all with the same exercise or based on the person's progression. And then our last principle of progression is the pendulum principle. That we can't demonstrate with the door anchor. That's what I alluded to earlier with the feet on one side and the head on the other, directly underneath or feet and head on the same side of the anchor. And that would be an example of like your hamstring ball curls. You could do same thing on the TRX, hamstring runners. Um, we used to call them surfer abs, so where you have your feet in and you're drawing your knees in towards your, towards your stomach. I don't know what the uh, official name, exercise name is for that one. Did you, was there a question over here? So tell me about torsional force and torque. Uh, it's something I worry about from a perspective of working with patients who have cancer, especially radiation changes you know, to the tissue, as well as if they've got radiation and bone degradation. So I think about so many patients could benefit from this with scapular stability mm -hmm. needs, but I worry about that upper extremity with the torque that might be yeah. placed on it. So I think what you would want to keep in mind with that is is choosing one of the most regressed positions possible. So yeah, what would that, be your goal? Would your goal be range of motion for that person? Well, it could be range of motion probably early on, but it may be scapular stability later. Yeah, yeah. I think that's great. So so one of the things actually, it was Randy who. who showed me this exercise. You'd think with the PT brain I could have figured it out myself, but it wasn't until he said, well, this is what I'm doing. But I mean, in terms of range of motion, I oftentimes will start with just a walking maneuver, just to give that person a little bit of control over the motion. And I might do flexion. I might do a little bit of horizontal abduction. I can even do um, abduction, basic. But then if you're looking at scap stability, and, and this, I know this from personal experience, when I fell off my bike and hurt my wrist, and had to still teach this class, I mean, you can easily go into just a real narrow um, or, or wide base, but fairly shallow vector. And just work on, you could do scap save here. You know, so basically your PT exercises, but it has an ins a component of instability. One of my favorite regressions um, that I always like to show off at trade shows is the standing side plank. So you've got somebody, um, a lot of people don't want to get down onto the floor. This probably wouldn't be your oncology patient, and it would have to be a patient with a sound shoulder. But you could certainly do just a very light, you know, standing side plank. Well, some of them are, some are very high level. I mean, the sure. majority, but yeah, I, I, thanks for showing those very sort yeah. of simplistic range of motion movements. I think it helps to contextualize something like this. I think you look at this and say, high level athlete, kind of, or yeah, it, yeah exactly, it's a little but scary. No, you could use it at all levels. This is great. Another one of our favorites is the isometric dynamic rota resisted rotation. And so that one, and this, you guys are going to look at me and think I'm not working at all. But this one, you stand sideways to the anchor point with the shoulder lined up with the anchor, and it's simply a matter of extending the elbows. And what I'm resisting clearly is the TRX desire to pull me that way, and that can become an exercise in itself. But just real simple, you know, if you want to start activating lateral core, there you go. Um, I have a, a patient who's a pediatric gastroenterologist with a bad case of spondylolisthesis, excuse me, and you know, he's on his feet all day, he's walking between rooms, and I, all I have him doing is just standing isometric, standing side plank, because any of that you know, extraneous movement will flare him up. So that's a nice way to add that in. Great question.
So what's the optimal amount of space you would need in a clinic for this, and what's the minimal amount? What's, you, you talk yeah. about anchoring positions. What would be sure. your ideal sort of layout? Good question. So we, the preferred anchoring height is for the um, anchor to be seven to nine feet tall. Now, I know that um, Josh and I were talking a little bit ago. He's, he works out in a facility that has, what you say, 20-foot ceilings, 30-foot ceilings. So they've got all sorts of extenders. The problem with that becomes you've got this long extender, which makes the forces just very, uh, almost like a swing set. It's just way too uncontrolled, I think. So seven to nine feet tall is, is ideal, and if, if you're short like me, six feet's a little bit easier to uh, measure. Um, the other thing is foot cradles would be about three to five inches off the ground. So this clearly is a little bit too high for what I would normally use clinically. In terms of, um, in terms of rotational space, I usually say about three feet. Is that what, yeah. Um, so you really don't need a lot of spaces, and you, you can see we're doing things in pretty close quarters here, but you know, about three feet on, on each side so that you can get all those planes of motion, the rotational, the frontal, and the sagittal planes. Yeah, terrific. Any other questions from the peanut gallery? Yeah, can you demonstrate some lower extremity? Yeah, absolutely. Anything, in, do you have a patient case in mind, or? Like we've got a patient with like a hip impingement. Hip impingement, okay. Great, so probably wanting to strengthen the posterior chain. Yeah. Okay, let's do, um, let's do, yeah, let's do some hamstring mm -hmm. curls and runners and bridge. We'll, we'll hit those three, and then let's do standing, um, let's do standing lunge, um, Sagittal and frontal, so to the side okay. and to the front. Do you want to the ground first? Yeah, let's go the ground based. So when we, if and when you take the class, which I hope that you do, it's a great class. We've had excellent feedback from therapists about um, the work that went into it. It's very much research based. I know we're in this this world of evidence based and what that means to people. Everyone wants to know. Oh, it's it's research based. Um, the folks that put this class together spend a ton of time looking at the current research and, and formulating it around this. So um, I, I think that as a PT, I appreciate that fact. Um, and I don't remember what I was going to say about that. But <laughs> So we're going to show some ground-based work. And again, we're already kind of, Brian's at a little bit of a disadvantage because you can see the angle coming out. This is going to be a little bit harder for him. So I would, I would ask you to use your hands. And again, you, you, you've got your PT exercise cues. You don't need me to tell you how to do the exercise, but just kind of give you the tool. So you're going to lift your hips up. I want you to curl your heels in towards the bottom. Good. And extend the knees. So just your basic hamstring curls that you might do on a ball or, you know, what have you. Let's go in to um, bend the knees and scoot your bottom in a little bit more towards the anchor point. Let's go 90-90. And then from here, you're just going to lift and lower your hips. Keep your knees bent. So keep your knees bent. Yep, up and down. So he's just doing a bridge here. He's making it look easy. And then let's go into hamstring runners. So for my endurance athletes, my runners and things, I, I love this exercise because I'm looking for that stable core. And I, then I can say, okay, Brian, step it up. Let's go a little bit faster. So can he maintain that stability? Well, wow. yep, as he steps up the velocity. Good. Come on back down. Um, some of my, we actually were talking in the booth today about what our favorite exercises are. My favorite are his least favorite. So. <laughs> but I'm going to make you demonstrate them anyway. So we're going to do um, the TRX lunge. And we're actually going to do, you're going to do um, foot in. Oh. Uh-huh. Foot in, we're going to do forward. Yeah, single. We'll do forward, forward with cross body reach and then frontal. So for the first one, and you know, for purposes of TRX world, this is the only tool I use. But we know that in the clinic, we use other tools. So I'll oftentimes add a medicine ball to this. I'll incorporate BOSU work with it, Arex balance pads. So it's, this is not my end all be all, although it's a lot of what I do. So from here, I want you to reach your right leg back as you bend your left leg to activate more abs and have them reach overhead. Yep, and almost even back a little bit more. Good. We can add, as he gets a little bit more into the power world, we can add a hop to this. Good. Nice. Good. And then from here, so what you're going to do from here, Brian, as, as you go down, you're going to reach your arms over to the left. Okay. So he's getting, calling in a little bit more glute function there. A little bit different work on the core. And then from here, turn and face. Well, let's switch feet so that you can face this direction and so we can give that leg a break. And you're going to put the left foot in and face me. Turn your whole body and face me. Okay, we're going to do that side lunge. This is always a fun one. 
Good. Great. So depending on your needs and your goals with the patient, you can have that agility, that power. You can make it super easy. You can make it very challenging. You can work speed. You can work slower, more eccentric loading. Very versatile. How much education do you find that it takes to get a patient up to speed with being safe with this at home? And do you use strategies like mirrors or what, what kind of advice could you give in that regard? Good question. Um, and I will say that kind of brings to light, do patients use this at home? Why would you use it in the clinic if the patient doesn't have it at home? Um, I, I find that a lot of my patients wind up getting them because they like what they're doing on them. Um, if that's the case, then I, I really make sure that we understand the principles of progression. I'll even give them some, some pictures, or that even better with technology, I'll videotape them doing the exercise. Uh, so I'll use my iPhone and literally just take a video of it, email it to them so they can see. I have a guy right now um, who, the, where we have ours anchored in my current clinic is against a wall without a mirror. And, but we do have a mirror really close by. So what he does is, because you, can, you really don't have to stand right, you can make your angle wherever, Mirrors here, and he'll you know he'll look at himself and make sure he's doing the right form and everything. So, I do think that you shouldn't somebody you shouldn't say to somebody go get one of these and not spend some time. But I don't think it takes a lot. The really neat thing about TRX is the online resources. So you can go on, and there's a lot of TRX loaded info, but there's also a user loaded info. So you know, for instance, I know Alan out here. Alan might get on here and, and find a really great program that he likes for runners and he may write a post about it and include exercises. So there's this really nice community of practitioners who are using TRX. There's also a TRX directory that when you take the, um, when you take the course, you'd be a part of. But it's, it's, it's a nice community where people are saying, hey, anybody, anybody have any good exercises for this? Um, and you can send your patients there for, for videos, and there is a whole DVD collection and things, but I find that you know, once people have seen it a little bit and played on it, they're a lot more comfortable using it. Perfect. Well, everyone, we are out of time. Thank you very much for joining us today for a live episode of PTP. Thank you very much to Shrizny and Brian for showing us all that great stuff. If you have uh, more questions for them, tweet it with PTTVCSM, but go to therapedia.com. You can watch this video again if you wanted to learn more of the tricks. Thank you, everyone, for watching at home, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.